And Manoj, you have to unmute your microphone. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. Okay, sorry. Is it audible now? Yeah, 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 it's fine. Yeah. So, uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Dilawar, for giving me opportunity to speak uh, on project development opportunities for large scale batteries development. Um, so, I'll be also going to add angle of sustainability and net zero because what we see, uh, whatever the project development or renewable development or battery storage, uh, what, whatever we are talking about or whatever we are doing, we are doing to achieve sustainability and net zero targets. So this is a prime objective of developing renewables uh, globally uh, to achieve uh, sustainability in energy and net zero uh, carbon emissions. So now if we, if we talk about what is the sustainability, what is the sustainable development, everyone is having different, different uh, definitions of sustainability. Uh, but as per UN, uh, there is a definition uh, which is like sustainable development is a development that meet the need of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. So whatever we are doing today, uh, how the future generation also can benefit, you know, uh, with this, uh, with the same resources, whatever available uh, or whatever we are utilizing today. So we have to be, you know, uh, uh, thinking about that and considering that into our uh, practices and uh, doing the de developments. So renewable and uh, battery storage, whatever we are developing, we are developing because mainly to offset the emissions at large scale and uh, whatever the ecology system is there to maintain that eco ecology system for future generation. So if we talk about, uh, and the, there is a new term called ESG, you know, uh, environment, social and governance, which, which is becoming very popular now, like for in, environmental side, climate change, uh, under environmental, if we look at this climate change strategies, biodiversity, water and uh, wastewater management, energy management, emission management and environmental system. So these are the attributes which comes under environmental. On social side, human resource management, equal opportunities, health, safety, human rights, uh, local communities. So uh, we have to you know, think about that also while developing any, uh, you know, uh, any project, uh, including uh, the battery storage. And uh, on governance side, business ethics, regulatory compliance, board and management performance, and stakeholder engagement. So these are the critical things which also we should consider while developing uh, any uh, projects. Now, uh, coming to uh, the emission. Uh, so there is a greenhouse gas uh, uh, GSG protocol, you know, which uh, which has defined the emissions into three uh, scope, scope one, scope two, scope three. I'm just, uh, you know, uh, putting uh, or highlighting what is exactly uh, scope one, scope two, scope three. Maybe some people will be aware, but um, maybe some other, you know, uh, audience may not, may not be aware. So just for sake of those audience, the scope one is basically uh, talking about greenhouse gas emission that comes from owned and uh, control sources. So whatever uh, businesses or whatever uh, development we are doing and how it is uh, emitting directly, uh, you know, to environment in terms of greenhouse gas emission that covers under scope one, uh, for example, for thermal power plant, boiler of uh, operation fuel uh, from directly owned vehicles. So these are the example which comes under scope one emissions. Scope two uh, is greenhouse gas emission that comes from purchase of energy, heat, steam, or cooling. So for example, uh, purchase electricity from a distribution company. If uh, that comes under scope two, if that electricity, how green that electricity is, if it is a green uh, electricity, then you are fulfilling your scope to, uh, you are reducing your scope to emissions. And if you're purchasing brown electricity, so you are basically you know, contributing towards uh, more uh, pollution. Scope three uh, is defined as a greenhouse emission that are indirectly generated from operations that are not covered by the previous scopes. So whatever covered in the scope one and two, which is uh, uh, and apart from that, whatever other emissions are there that comes under scope three. For example, like employee commuting and business travels, like how we are traveling, where we are using public transport or where we are using uh, you know, um, uh, 
uh, gasolines more so that all or outsource activities that also comes under uh, scope 3 so this is just uh, <clears throat> you know brief about uh, the carbon uh, emission is uh, scope 1 scope 2 and scope 3 now uh, how to re reduce this uh, emissions so for that measurement reduction and offset these are the three strategies which need to be adopted so first we need to measure uh, whatever things we are doing how it is uh, what is the absolute value of that in terms of uh, emissions then how we can reduce that this is the second strategy so for that whatever need uh, development need to be done or whatever retrofittings or whatever like uh, uh, renewables development or battery storage project development for fulfilling scope one and scope two requirement so that will come under uh, reduction strategies and then third is the offsetting if suppose something which we are not directly able to uh, reduce so how we can offset that so that strategy also need to be developed by by uh, uh, basically by uh, nature you uh, doubling more nature based solutions or technology solutions for offsetting and ensuring the third party party uh, assurance or, or credit for offsetting so these are the uh, you can say uh, three key steps uh, you know for emission reduction and uh, bat large scale battery storage development is one of the area where we can you know directly reduce emissions so now uh, uh, if we talk about recently uh, in cop 26 uh, we have seen uh, india has committed uh, to develop 500 gigawatt of non fossil fuel based energy generation uh, by 2030 and reduce the total projected carbon emission by 1 billion tons uh, by 2030 to attain this target uh, india needs a significant amount of grid storage and large in increase in number of ev so ev is also one of the important areas where we need to look into why this battery storage now the question is why not uh, why now so the key factors of key elements are like globally climate action uh, and need to integrate how higher share of re is happening so we this is the right time you know to enter into this segment second the energy security we are developing more renewables but uh, as we know uh, wind and solar are not firm so to make them firm we have to have more storage uh, so that grid balancing will be there to reduce the air pollution increase vehicle uh, electric vehicle ambition we have targeted 30 percent ev by 2030 so to achieve that we need to have uh, you know a mobility storage system also in place industrial development and indigenization also you know uh, requires uh, more uh, battery storage to be placed to uh, have firm power and uh, uh, as we all know uh, most of the speaker already have highlighted the cost of battery is also significantly fa falling down. So this is the right time to enter into this segment. Um, now, uh, the opportunities for large scale battery development, if we look at, um, there are many uh, estimations done by many think tanks. Uh, now, uh, it, at present around, uh, uh, you can say, um, the market size of uh, large scale battery in India is around uh, $2 billion. Uh, where mo most of the development is happening in behind the meter or uh, EV segment, but uh, uh, grid uh, or stationary grid st scale storage quantity is right now at present it is less. But there is an estimation like by 2030, the overall market size of uh, battery in India is going to be more than uh, 15 billion uh, per year and uh, the annual demand of and hello and the annual demand of battery will be more than 250 uh, gigawatt hour per year uh, and most of the uh, develop uh, the demand will be created from stationary storage and ev segment side so uh, the demand from ev and stationary storage will be more uh, for example the commercial four wheeler vehicle uh, there is a good demand uh, you know uh, in that segment 
same for uh, grid support and ancillary services the demand in next 10 years will be very high uh, behind the meter uh, demand also will pick up uh, probably by 2025 onwards uh, so these are the areas where you know uh, lots of demand will be created especially on commercial four wheel vehicle uh, then electric buses um, uh, grid support and anc ancillary services then c and i behind the meter so these are the areas where lots of demand will be created in coming years uh, at present if we look at lots of uh, pilot based project or small or medium sized battery project already have been demonstrated in last 5 to uh, 5 years like tata power bses um, um, then uh, terry uh, so these projects uh, th those projects are already you know developed uh, and there are certain projects which are under construction um, from cel national ntpc uh, side and lots of new projects are also you know optioned by seki um, so uh, new new developments are keep on happening in battery front and i think there is a huge opportunity for everyone to participate in this uh, sunrising sector um, so because if we look at uh, the india re capacity by 2030 will be uh, 817 gigawatt so to fulfill this 800 uh, to stable this uh, 870 gigawatt grid power we need minimum 27 gigawatt of storage which uh, uh, considering four hours of you know uh, backup uh, uh, which which will be coming around 108 gigawatt hour uh, you know uh, storage energy so this is a need of uh, you know uh, in next 10 years this is a opportunity available to invest in battery sector in india thanks thanks dr dilawar uh, and uh, yeah. yeah thank you manoj yeah for this uh, good uh, presentation so you have covered a lot in that so we have got uh, some questions so now this is i